Hi everyone, this is Marcus with DTF Station, and in this video, we will go over how to operate your Aries 113 UV printer. First, make sure to have a pair of scissors and a snap blade ready. Now turn the printer on using the switch in the back. Once the status shows idle, Now click cleaning to perform a head cleaning. Once complete, take a look at where the right side of the media lands on the printer bed. You want to select a starting location for your prints. It looks like the media is at about 5.5 centimeters, but to be safe, let's select 7 centimeters to give it some room for error. Go to Hosensoft, go to setting up top. Under margin setting, change the X margin to 7 centimeters or 70 millimeters. Now click save up on the top right. Now that the X margin is saved, let's go over some of the settings before moving on. Auto clean should be set to clean flush. Next leave standby clean at 14,400 seconds, which will clean the head lightly every four hours. For print direct, you may change this to unidirectional, which means that, that the print head lays down ink only in on direction, which will make the prints more crisp and give a matter varnish finish. This setting is also very good for smaller fine prints. Print speed should be set to high for production, but is recommended to be set to middle for smaller fine prints. Do not change any other settings here. Now, let's move on. Go to menu, head maintenance, and click enter at head status to perform to print a nozzle check pattern. Once the nozzle check pattern has been printed, check the pattern to make sure you have at least 90% of your nozzles firing. You will need to use a UV flashlight to see the white and varnish inks. If you are getting less than 90% of your nozzles, repeat the head cleaning until you get 90% of your nozzles firing. Once you have a good nozzle, we can move on. Note, they are near invisible through the camera, but you will have two white channels next to your CMYK patterns and six varnish channels below that. Note, if the head cleanings are not clearing up your nozzles and you are missing more than 30% of your nozzles, perform a fill ink. This should be able to get all your nozzles firing properly. On the control panel, head to menu, head maintenance, fill ink, Note, choose two head if both your CMYK and varnish inks are clogged. Choose left head to fix just the CMYK channels and right head if just the varnish channels are clogged. Perform the fill ink for five seconds. Five seconds begin once you see a flow of ink draining out the waste ink tube. Click cancel to end the fill ink once you hit five seconds. This should clear any clogs or air bubbles inside the lines. Once complete, Always perform at least one head cleaning in order to remove excess ink from the capping station and to wipe the print head with the wiper blade before a nozzle check is performed. Once you have a good nozzle check pattern, let's move on. Now open Digital Factory and before starting a print job, this would be a good time to check that your IP address is set correctly. Go to Q, select Manage Queues, select TCP IP, go to the Remote Printing tab and re-verify that the IP address that was inputted earlier has remained the same. Once confirmed, you can close that window. Note, do not click this install button under the control panel column. Now close this window. Lastly, we want to make sure that the film is already attached to the take-up reel before proceeding to print. This will ensure that the film is being pulled to prevent any issues. You may attach weights to film to let gravity pull until the film is long enough to tape to the take-up reel, but it is highly recommend to have the film attached to the take-up reel from the very beginning. Once attached, make sure the take-up reel is powered on by switching it to the two position. Now head back into DGRIP. Click this import icon on the top left and look for an image you'd like to print. Once you find that image, double click the file to import. Once imported, select that line item under the queue. This will bring up options to adjust the image on the bottom, right? You can increase the number of copies that you would like to print of the same image. This will auto nest your images in a way that will save you as much media as possible. You can use these icons up above to adjust the location of the image. This icon will center it for you. Once ready, click this print icon up above to start production. 
Note, if the printer does not start after you click print, double check that in your device's queue that IP address has not changed. Also check Hosensoft to make sure your connection icon is still green. If your connection icon is red, click on it, then take a screenshot and email it to a DTF station technician for assistance. If anything happens during the printing process, you can always use this button to pause temporarily, then the same button again to resume printing. This is a good tool to use in case you have to adjust the media. Never adjust the media without pausing or else it may cause a head strike. Disclaimer, do not leave the prints inside the heat roller for too long in the paused status. This can change the representation of the final print. Make sure to advance the film consistently and slowly at all times. This button you can use to cancel the entire job from the printer. If you'd like to cancel, press enter here. Once the printing is complete, you can press this down arrow key to bring the media out further. You can also use the left and right arrow keys to move the printer carriage left and right. To get the printer carriage moving initially, tap the left arrow key once. This will disengage the carriage from the capping station. Then press and hold the left arrow key to move the carriage to the left. Normally you would do this process when performing your daily maintenance. Note, it is not recommended to use the right arrow key. This could increase the chances of the printhead being left uncapped when idle, which can dry out the printhead. Whenever you need to send the printer carriage back home, click on enter which will move the printhead all the way to the right and cap it. It is also good practice to keep this door open so that you can visual confirm that the printhead has been capped properly. Now let's try printing another job. Head back into DGRIP. Click the port button, find and double click the file you'd like to print. Select the job in the queue and adjust the number of copies and dimensions down on the bottom right. Use these icons to adjust the location of the graphic. Then, when ready, press the print icon to start printing again. Once the job is complete, press the down arrow key to bring the print further out. Then you can use a blade to cut across the media here. Place the take up reel to the center position to stop the motor. Now you have successfully printed your project. Once you're ready to apply the print to your substrate, cut out the portion of the print that you'd like to use. Peel off the backing as shown. Then place the film against the substrate, making sure that it has a good solid contact by rubbing on the top of the film. You may also use a squeegee to provide even pressure during application. Then carefully peel the film off. When peeling, make sure to peel the film close to the surface of the substrate instead of outwards away from the surface. This will leave the final print on your substrate. Make sure to give the print at least 24 hours to make sure that the UV ink has ample time to fully cure. Depending on the substrate, the final print may not be permanent and can still be scratched, especially when applying to plastic surfaces. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.